Hello, my name is Catherine Sturrock and I design the Sugar Buttons range of moulds and work in conjunction with Katie Sue Designs. I'm going to show you how to use the Sugar Button Owl mould. Um, this one is it's just a fantastic mould. It's a very large, substantial mould with three different size owls. You also get the branch and you get some leaves there as well. So you can build up all sorts of different scenes for all occasions. Uh, and different seasons as well. I'm just going to show you a couple of samples so you can see how the finished articles will look. So if you, if you have a look at this one we can see all three different size owls. These have been made with the air dry clay and I've also used the branch from within the mould and some of the little leaves to decorate as well. But you can change this around so maybe if you're thinking about Christmas why not give the owls Santa hats. So, you know, every different colour that you work with will change the look of these and as I say, you can theme them to any occasion including new baby, wedding, all sorts of different things. So let's get to work with the mould and show you how easy it is to actually work with it. As usual with the Katie Sue moulds, they're made of a food grade silicon so they work for the sugar, sugar crafting areas as well as the general crafting areas. The moulds are very, very flexible, they're going to last a lifetime, they're dishwasher safe, they will withstand heat as well, so if you want to use things like um, the embossing powders that you melt or hot glue or candle wax or anything like that, they will all work perfectly from these moulds. But we're going to work with the air dry clay. My preference is the hearty clay, which is super lightweight, so it's brilliant for those card embellishments, it's not going to add to the weight. And we're going to show you how to build up in colours so that when you take the individual items from the mould, you're not worrying about too much paintwork or decoration. They're going to look fantastic straight from the mould. So to start with, I'm just going to show you um, very easily, you know, you can see where all the different outlines and areas of design are. You've got to think with the moulds that you're looking down into them. So what the deepest part of the mould is actually the front of the finished item. So if you're building up in colours, it's the deepest part of the mould that you're going to fill first. So that's going to become clear as you watch the demonstration. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of orange clay and I'm going to put the, the owl's beak in. Because it's a very small area, I'm just going to take a tiny little ball of clay and I'm going to literally just drop that into the, into the place there. You can push down with a fingertip and that's usually enough just to get that into place. But if you want to use some sort of tool, like a Dresden tool, or this is a metal um, clay tool, but a Dresden tool made of plastic, or the end of a paintbrush, or a metal ball tool, something like that will work just as well. So you can use that tool just to make sure that that little bit of clay is placed perfectly. Just be careful to avoid overspill. By that I mean don't put too much clay in there because you don't want the colours to bleed together. So that's our starting point. And then I'm going to move on to a little bit of white clay. Now the eyes of the owl are mixed um, and brought together in different layers, but I would say this is one area that I would suggest that you partially paint. So all I'm doing here is putting some white clay into one area of the eye. Now it, there's three different layers to these, so I'm really just covering the first two layers. So I'm just hold that up so you can see it a little bit better. Again, be careful of the overspill. If you fill this area too much, when you put another colour over the top, they may bleed together. But don't worry if that happens because it's very easy to rectify or if you're really unhappy with something, at the end of the day, it's a piece of clay that you can roll up and start again. So I'm actually going to just remove the tiniest bit there just in case I've got a, slightly, a slight overfill there. Okay, then we can move on to our next colour. And I'm going to go with this lovely mint green. This has been mixed from the, the leaf green hearty clay and white. I'm going to just roll that into a ball and place over the top of the area that I've already filled. It starts to anchor down the clay that's already there. But then I'm going to push with my fingertips and just work that over the top. So I'm hiding what's already there but filling the next layer. So again, if you find it's easy with a tool, you need to find those edges and make sure that everything's nicely placed. Of course you can decide on the colour, you can layer up in as many colours as you like here. You could go with just one, one colour, maybe just the white clay and then paint the detail. But I think if you work in layers of pre-coloured clay you will get a much more professional finish. So there we've got the next layer in so it's very quick and easy. And then 
because it's sugar buttons we like the sugary colours I'm going to go with a pink I do like the, the mixture of the green and the pink together so again straight over the top of the colour that I've already added into the mould and I'm going to start to work in the pink into the areas of the, the main body of the owl and also the wings if you don't quite have enough you can top up you don't have to go all with one piece and in the same way if you've got too much clay you can remove any excess the only area that I've left free from clay at the moment is the little feet which I'm going to add some orange in a second but you can see that I've just filled up just so it's nicely level with the top of the mould there's maybe a little bit of a dip there where the, the ear of the owl is so I'm going to top that up you're looking for a nice even layer of clay so finally a little bit more of the orange and I'm going to pop a piece in one foot and a piece in the other and it really doesn't matter what the back of this is looking like at the moment because I'm going to stick it down onto my project and we only see the front so it's a good idea then to use an acrylic rolling pin just one of the white acrylic ones that the sugar crafters use is, is ideal these can be bought from any supermarket really these days or cake decorating shop so very easy to get hold of. Most of you have probably already got these in the kitchen. So I've used the rolling pin just to compact down the clay to make sure it picks up all the detail and then using a fingertip I'm going to go around the outer edge just pulling in the clay to give a nice clean outline. Now one thing I've not said is if you use the clay straight from the pack and it's very wet you may find it's a little bit harder to uh, release the clay from the mould. What I didn't show actually, and I will, will say is very important, if you wash the moulds or you think there's any moisture in there from dishwasher or something like that, use a little bit of corn flour just on a brush and dust out the mould. I did do this beforehand, but it's very simple just to dust into the mould and then tap out the excess and that will help release the clay from the mould when you come to the next stage. So all we need to do now is just flex the mould itself and you can see if I just hold that how easily that's actually lifting. So just work around. If I'm doing all three owls, I do tend to do them one at a time and release each owl from the mould rather than doing all three and then trying to get them out together. And then you can see there, that has come out perfect. You can see the different layers of the colours. And we can add to that. I'm going to put it to one side in a second and then work with uh, some other elements of the mould itself. But we're going to bring the eyes to life and add some detail shortly. So I'm just going to put that onto a piece of kitchen towel. The reason I do that is to leach out any moisture in the clay. It will help it dry out. The air will dry from the top and when it feels quite dry you could always turn it over and uh, allow the air to get to the bottom as well. So back to the mould itself. We've got this branch which can be used just as it is or you could break it down and make smaller branches. For maybe if you just want the small owl and a little branch you can do that. Or you can add pieces together you could bend them and shape them and of course you've got the leaves to add as well. So what I'm doing here is using some brown clay, this is the brown hearty and I've rolled it out so it more or less fits straight down the length of that branch there. Just makes it easier if you don't have too much clay to start with and then you can fill in the two little branches separately. So once again it doesn't matter if you go over the top with a little bit more clay just to top up and if you've got too, uh, too much clay you can always remove the excess very easily as well. Now because of the branch being a long thin piece we don't really need the rolling pin you can just push this down with fingertips just make sure it's well compacted because you want to pick up all the detail underneath and again try and keep it level with the top of the mould itself and then tidy up by going around the edge with a fingertip just to give that nice clean line and then it's just a case of flexing the mould again and you can see you can see how that easily comes away if the clay is a little bit too wet and it's bending then take the clay out leave it to sit in the air for a few minutes although with the branch you'll probably find that you can just give it a helping hand quite easily anyway so there we've got our our branch and you can see the detail we've got the wood bark effect there you can use inks or powders just dusted over the top afterwards to accentuate the, the detail in that. So now we've got the branch for our owl to sit on, I think we're going to need some leaves to go on there as well. So in exactly the same way, remember if you need a little bit of corn flour, 
dust that and tap out the excess and that will just help aid release the clay and then I'm just going to start to push some nice bright green clay into those areas and you can make as few or as many of these as you like and build them up. So I'm just going to make one or two little sections of leaves and then we'll build them up onto the branch before we sit the owl onto it. So I'm just going to put them all to one side, bring the branch back in. Now remember this is an air dry clay so it, it does exactly that, it dries in the air but you don't need any glue, while well, the clay has got moisture in it it will actually stick to itself. So a little bit of a helping hand with a tool, so I'm using a little ball tool there just to push that down there and you can shape if you wish. So I'm going to put two sets of three together and then maybe let's go with just two of the leaves and I'm going to put that behind the branch you don't want them to all look as though they're growing out from the front so you know you decide where these want to go and then maybe we'll just have a couple of extra leaves at the other end and you can curl those over if you like so very very simple just to build that up in whichever way you like so we're going to bring our owl back in I've got one that I made earlier as well it's been drying out a little bit the only area that I've not coloured with the clay or, pre or put pre-coloured clay in is the outer bit of it, well the, the eyeball itself. I've just done the eyes in white but there is an area and you can see this, I don't know how clear you can pick that up at the moment, we can see, i just point it with a, a tool, you can see the little dots of the eyes, that's where the little white flecks will go but there are some lines where the eyeball is as well. Now I suggest that you paint those in rather than trying to get the black clay into the mould itself. The reason being because the area is very shallow it is easy to get the, the clays um, overfilled so that they will bleed together. So my tip would be just to paint that one area in. Now there's different ways you can do that. You can obviously you need your paint but you could use a paintbrush or you could use a larger ball tool and pick up some paint with the ball tool and literally just dot that on. I find using a ball tool gives more control than a brush so it's, it's painting with, with the ball tool rather than the bristles. So I'm just going to add a little bit of black on the other side as well. Now those little white dots in the eyes I'm going to add shortly but you can also trim up in other ways as well. So because these are whimsical owls, it wouldn't hurt to give them a few uh, spots or something like that. So maybe if we just get some white paint. And again, I do like to use the ball tools rather than a brush because you get a better spot really, rather than a brush where you haven't got the same control and the brush is flexible. It's very easy just to pick up a ball tool and dot with that. So we'll add one or two little spots. You could use powders, you could um, use paint in other ways as well. Uh, you, can, you can move the owl, its wings, you can bring them forward so it looks like he's trying to fly or she's trying to fly. Maybe give them something to hold. Perhaps if it was a new baby card or something that like that you were making, you could give them a balloon um, or something to hold that represents a newborn baby. So lots of different ways you can work with it. You can see there how the wings will move, so if you want them flat you can have them flat or if you want it to look as though it's flying. As with the feet that's very similar, you can pull those forward so that they sit flat and then your owl will perch nicely onto the branch. I do quite like having my owls dancing so sometimes I tend to sort of stand them on one leg, just move that one out of the way, and just perch onto the branch like that. It's having a bit of a dance and then finally I'm just going to add the final bit of detail which is the white dot in the eye now that is already there for you you can see it but if you want to change the position you could do that you could add it in a different place but I'm just using a cocktail stick and a dot of white paint just to add the fleck in the eye and that is all you need to do Leave that to dry, let it dry thoroughly. If you're going to put it onto card or paper, you must make sure all the moisture is dried totally out of it. But then you can add to your projects and you can see the finished results look great. Thanks for watching.
and I hope you can tune into some of our other tutorials. Mm -hmm.